Today's video, we're going to be breaking down a little gameplay film and uh, in my Super Bowl, so it should be a decent matchup. And he's already running some interesting formations here out in the gun slot um, offset. So I uh, just want to do some more gameplays here on the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the video. And uh, like I said, we're going to be kind of going inside our mind, just talking about why we're doing what we're doing when we're doing it. Um, I feel like this is the type of video that I would really benefit from, so hopefully you do as well. So real quick in Dollar, I just want to talk a little bit just about the formation in general, why it's so good, what we're doing out of it. So good because of the blitzing threats, obviously. It's a symmetrical formation, the coverages that you can create. Um, kind of starting out here in my Super Bowl against kind of a formation that I'm not super familiar defending. I want to go ahead and just kind of see what he's doing, a little bubblegum scheme here, and um, kind of was anticipating something like that out of the slot offset. This uh, formation is actually really, really good. I think K-Mac ran this in the Gulag, and I don't know if he won the tournament. He might have won the tournament. I know he made the finals. I'm not sure if he won it, um, but this formation is really good. So, um, you know, kind of coming out, I'm just trying to, honestly, I'm just trying to play a little bit, but don't break. Just kind of see, like, what are the plays that we're looking at? What are the what are the predominant plays that he's going to be running systematically? You could tell a lot on your first drive. Typically, when you play somebody on their first drive, they're going to show you kind of their bread and butter. And so I just don't want to get I just don't want to give up a run play for a touchdown. Um, you want to try to like again just really just make the first drive as long as you can so that you can see the biggest sample size. So I'm gonna be running a lot of cover four here, running a lot of like just simple defense in, trying to kind of like force the issue. Let's see if I can get him to throw this to me. Nope. And actually, that's so that's just crazy to me. Okay, so that's exactly what you don't want to have happen. So uh, you know, right there, probably should have blitzed a little bit more. He doesn't really have a seam threat on the left, so we're gonna do this. And I can't. The other thing that's really frustrating about this formation is I can't. I don't think I can hot route or make an adjustment when he starts his like motion snap. I think it literally like freezes your defense and whatever you're in. Uh, to me, that's really frustrating because I might want to make a you know an adjustment off of that, but unfortunately, I just can't. So. I'm going to try this defense out a little bit now that we're getting down here in the red zone, trying to see if we can kind of force the issue a little bit, see if it throws this corner to us. And he actually just <laughs> he actually just did us a huge favor by throwing that. Uh, he actually had the corner route open to the right-hand side, but wasn't able to uh, make that read. So I'm in the Jets playbook in uh, running bunch strong. I really like this formation. been having a lot of fun with this. I think it's a really good standalone formation. You can pretty much run this formation alone and be pretty effective. Now, he comes out. He's showing dollar first play. I mainly just want to see kind of what his plan is for this little bubble screen, if he's going to man up circle. Uh, I like to do this pretty much the first play of every game that I play, and a couple of reasons why. Number one, if you're in the middle of the field, it helps you get on a hash mark. Number two, another little underrated thing it does is it just communicates to them that you're willing to run this play. And then uh, the third thing it does is it forces them to have to respect the fact that you have the bubble screen, and they're going to have to start manning people up out of their defense. So kind of just running through through some of my favorite plays here as I get screamed at as I block six and do the side protection. That's why the A-gap blitz, in my opinion, is so good. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of like literally almost like have like a script of what I want to call. So I want to start with the RPO, go to the corner route play, and then maybe go to this play out of Durham. See here he's not manning up the circle receiver, but he does some kind of KO on Pacheco over there, which I'm really shocked that he has. I don't know why he would have that because Pacheco's best ability – is deep out zone KO, so just kind of interesting. Here, uh, kind of a third and three situation. We're going to audible uh, over here to trips. The main reason why is just because he's pressed up. So I want to see if he can stop this fade route to the left-hand side. If he can't, um, this is going to be good. Awesome. Thank you so much for not allowing me to call my play. I want to do the same basic thing. We'll just do it a little faster here. So I think right there, actually, he showed, did he show blitz? No. I don't know why I can't get the trips here. So uh, if you guys didn't know, there's kind of a glitch in trips where if they're baseline pressed, if that outside corner isn't an outside third, a lot of times you can actually hit this. And he actually plays really good defense, but he left that open. <sighs> and these just like random sheds, bro. These just random. Uh, that's frustrating. All right, fourth and eight. So fourth and eight situationally, uh, kind of a – you don't want to be on a fourth down in your first drive. I feel like they got kind of two fluky sheds, had wide open players, just couldn't pass the ball to them. Obviously, um, you know, I need to be better, but, you know, just kind of frustrated by that. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to come out quick snipe, corner strike. It's one of my favorite plays in the game right now, just a simple streak right here because this throw to the corner route is very similar to the play stick 
out of gun bunch. It's almost the exact same corner route. And so they just like, they have to do a lot to stop the tight end flat and the corner route. A lot of people don't use the tight end flat. I actually think the tight end flat is one of the most underrated parts of that play because that flat, um, a hard flat in my experience doesn't really defend it. It has to be almost like a stock curl flat. And then that stock curl flat's not really going to do a good job of defending the other stuff that you have. So, um, you know, I like that as well. So you're just kind of going back to double corner. I feel like I had it and I uh, just wasn't able to make the throw, able to make the throw this time, get out of there and see if we can just get in. Unfortunately, we can't. So now we're going to have to go score in the red zone. The red zone, in my opinion, is the hardest place to score in men 24. Uh, sometimes it's free. Sometimes it's not. It just kind of depends on who you're playing. Here he kind of shows this little man coverage look on the right. So I'm kind of you know, kind of planning to run the run the ball, just kind of see if he can stop this run. He's able to do that. So now what we're going to do is go to one of my favorite plays um, down here in the red zone, and that's P boot over. A lot of people don't realize how good of a play P boot over is uh, this year in the red zone. And the main reason why is because of the fact that you can smart route this tight end post, and then you have a little hitch on the left side on the numbers. So it makes this really, really good. As you see, I have the tight end. Let's see if I can make the throw. Wide open, touchdown, and we're off to a good start. Whenever you get a stop and then you're able to get seven, it really does a good job of like just – it just makes it so you're you're playing with a lead, and so it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is making the game as systematic as possible. Um, as you saw right there – in that drive, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't execute at a high level, but I think one of the things that people misunderstand a lot about Madden is you, a lot of people don't really know like why you do what you do and also when you do what you do. Okay. A lot of people know how, like they know the best route combos in the game or they know, they know like double posts is a really good play. They know vertical is a good play, but they don't know why to call verticals versus call double posts versus call uh, curl flat. They don't really understand some of those things. And so I want to talk a little bit about that in this video, just in terms of the logical progression um, in Madden. Also, I wanted to say uh, you can actually kind of to a degree apply the same uh, principle uh, to this on defense. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to stop this. I don't know if we'll be able to. We're kind of really getting adjusting. Of course, he's going to run to the right. I'm going to get out of here and just take this away. Got the guy wide open in the middle of the field. Yeah, that was pretty bad defense. So um, why do you do what you do, right? I think that's a super, super important thing. I also think to a degree at times it's very possible to make this game more complicated than it has to be. When you have a power play, I talk a lot about the the offensive structure, basically, the way that I structure most of my ebooks, the way that I structure offenses in general, is essentially a power counter constraint. So when I say power counter and constraint, what I mean is you want to have a power play. That's that's a bread and butter play. That's a play that like, you know, that's like double post this year for most people, uh, the double corner route. The, there's a lot of different power plays in, in, in really every formation. Probably if it's a good formation, Madden, it probably has multiple power plays, right? It, if you think about Gun Bunch, for example, I'm just using that because, you know, we know, but we kind of know what we're getting with, with Bunch. Um, if we just use gun bunch as kind of like a, an explanation for what good offense is, because it's been one of the best offenses for the last probably at least 10 years. It's been, it's literally been good since I've been doing YouTube. So since Madden 12, it's been very effective. Um, but anyway, if we just, if we just use, let me throw this wheel. So you threw that last time. If we just use gun bunch as kind of like a, a base point or a baseline of like what makes a good offense in Madden, we know that there are um, number one. You need you need to be able to attack the whole entire field with your routes. So the routes on your on your play, you you have to have the ability to attack the whole field. If you can't attack the whole whole field, I think it's a it's a significant disadvantage um, offensively. So the first thing is you need to be able to attack. Um, the entire field. So that's having posts, crossers, corners, um, stuff like that. Obviously, Hot Route Master can kind of help some of that. Ah, good read. Uh, obviously, Hot Route Master, I probably should have purpled that guy. Hot Route Master can certainly help that a little bit, but it doesn't wholesale like, like you also have formations in general, you know, that can, that can do this. I keep messing up my adjustments, bro. It's kind of frustrating. Okay, so and then the, the thing about the power play is there is typically if a power play is good, like, for example, this year, double post, just streak the slot receiver. Um, this is one of the best plays in the game. OK, so if that power play is truly a good power play, which that play, power play is certainly a really good power play. Right. Then all you have to do let me see if I can get there. That's crazy to me that that was a completion. All you have to do is you have to understand, like, what stops it and why. Obviously, this takes a little bit of lab work, but when you actually stop and, you know, kind of think from a defensive perspective, what stops double post 
is typically um, is typically a kind of a cover two base defense, maybe um, essentially like a deep half on the solo side with a cloud to take away the the C route. Like there's kind of a cover two on the solo side, and then almost like a cover four uh, on the on the other side. So that was kind of like a basic understanding of of what actually stops, uh, what actually plays double post decently, right? So with that in mind, what are your counter plays to your power play? Maybe a way to beat cover two on the solo side or, um, you know, just different things like that. Those are the kind of, those are the kind of things you want to think through when you're developing an offense. So when someone actually does stop your power play or they show the capability to stop your power play, typically it leaves them vulnerable to something else. So the way that I equate this to the real NFL is Vince Lombardi uh, is famous for running what's known as the Packers sweep. And the Packers sweep, basically, if you think it out, um, the Packers sweep essentially had like certain defenses that would be able to stop it. And I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head like how to actually explain how they would stop it. But essentially, the main defense that was really, I think, almost kind of to a degree created to stop it was the 4-3 flex defense. Um, this was the defense that Tom Landry invented. If you guys didn't know, uh, Tom Landry and Vince Lombardi were actually the, on the same coaching staff. Um, and so they kind of went up, you know, they kind of learned, they kind of came up together. I can't believe he completed that. Um, so they kind of came up together in their in their coaching staff. And so essentially what that meant for a practical practically is they had to understand what each other were doing on both sides of the ball, how to counter that. And then also the other kind of thing about that is there were certain things that when you were able to counter the power play, though, it left other things open. If you know the 4-3 flex defense, what it essentially is, is it's very similar to I don't have it here. Um, but it's very similar to like four, three, even six, one, right? So with four, three, even six, one, essentially what would happen is the, essentially they would have like a kind of a, a, a lane open to run the ball right down the middle. So a lot of teams would use the play traps, traps or counter plays to kind of gaps, basically gap scheme runs, uh, to be able to, to counter that. Right. So. That was, in essence, oh, thank God I stopped him. I'm so thankful that I stopped him right there. I thought he was going to get in. So it, it, that that at its core is kind of the basics of schematics, if you think about it. And then they would run play action off of that as well. So if you were you know, bringing too many people down the box, uh, you, I think we're pretty uh, – if you guys watch any NFL film, you'll see the Packers in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, and there were just so many post routes open because the safeties were coming down. Um, coming down into the box to try to stop the run. So that's kind of just a very basic example of what I would say is power counter constraint. So let me let me take it to this here for a second. So RPO alert screen. This would be an example of a constraint theory play because it ensures um, it, it ensures that you're kind of living in a perfect world in terms of like it it, it really. There's certain specific things they have to do to stop that, but it's not like you wouldn't run an RPO every play. At least I wouldn't. You can, but I wouldn't do that. But then a power play uh, in this example would be this play corner strike, the double corner concept. We know this is one of the best concepts in Madden this year. And so we would run something like this. Let me see if I can make this throw. That's actually a terrible animation. I actually still made it, though. Um, so, so we'd run something like this, and there's certain very specific things they have to do. For example, one of the things they have to do is they have to have a cloud over there on the right side. Um, and it can't be, it, it really needs to be like a cloud flat zone. It does. It can't be really zone dropped. Um, that's what makes it hard to stop. So then what they're become vulnerable to, uh, and that's actually, I have R1, dang it. Um, I'm not going to risk an overthrow. I've had so many bad overthrows in the last day or two. So they have to basically have like a cloud flat over there on the right hand side. Now you saw right there, he backed that guy off. That is a pretty big tell that it's probably going to be double Mabel. This play does a really good job at attacking double Mabel here that I'm about to run. I don't have the right route combo, but we're just going to run it because I think the corner route will win. He actually just backed off man coverage. Appreciate that. So, Back to what kind of the discussion out of corner strike. So there's a specific thing they have to do, right? They have to have a cloud flat over there on the right, or they have to man up circle. The man up of circle also stops verticals. It also stops the RPO screen. So I actually think the, the best way to kind of go about it is to uh, is to man up your outside bunch receiver. However, that creates other problems. So like if I wanted to run the play, now you have to have a hard flat, because if I wanted to run the play stick and I just wanted to utilize this tight and flat route, which we'll actually show here, 
this Titan flat ride is super, super good. So they have to kind of anticipate that. They're going to have a hard flat over there for that. You know, so we'll look out here. We'll see if they have a hard flat. Ends up coming inside, and that's terrible. I literally tried to high point that up into the outside. It got stuck, and I just might have lost the game. Oh, wow. I mean, I haven't lost the game, but that's just terrible. That's just terrible. Gosh, that's just stupid of me. I should have just ran the ball. That's it, and that's why people run the ball uh, inside the five. I wonder if this can stop it. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to get him to throw. I'm trying to get him to throw a bubble screen here. I don't know if this. I don't know if this stops or not. When you play in someone like this, they're kind of running some. Uh, I need that to stop it. I need that to stop it, bro. Yeah, I guess you have to press up against that. Okay, so 12 seconds, end of half. What do you think we do? Hopefully we just – I probably fair catch here just because of the way he's been playing, try to get in, try to get a big play and then hit a field goal. Yeah, we'll do that. Some people like to run this out. I don't really like to run this out right here. I don't like being in the middle of the field, but you have three timeouts. What you could do is you could call – I don't know. There's a lot of different theories here. I think what we're going to do, see, backed off the corners. I'm just going to call Flood, and I'm going to go with this combo. Let's see if I can get it. I'm going to force feed it. Can I get a possession catch, and I can't. <sighs> shame. That's a shame. All right, let's go corner strike with a streak, see what happens, make a read. And it blitzes off the edge. We'll just take our yards. We'll go to trips. Actually, we'll go to bunch tight end here. I actually really like when they come out in three deep. I feel like I have a much better shot than if they're like just in their basic defense this year. Oh, yeah, he's on the D lineman. This could be a tutty. Blue. Rat catch. Touchdown. There it is. Oh, man. this. I mean, there we go. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound right there. So, uh, anyways, back to kind of the discussion on the offensive side of the ball is like, okay, so like if there's a very specific set of things that they can do to stop that, typically what that's going to do is it's going to leave them vulnerable. And so you want to have a second play, a counter play of sorts, that really takes advantage of what those things are that are going to leave them vulnerable. And the example of bunch strong offset, typically what I've seen is – when they're running those stock cloud flats, one of the best things to do is go to the play Durham because you could put the running back on a streak and that gets up into that soft seam area of the field because typically if they're going to run a cloud flat out there, they're not going to be able to run a vert hook as well. And that vert hook is – I don't normally see a lot of people putting yellow zones on the side of the bunch uh, in bunch strong. I should have fair caught that. Uh, so that's a, that's a big part. Okay. So – once they start to put like little cloud flats out there to stop the corner route, then it opens up your running back streak up out of the backfield. A lot of people like to cross man that, but I would say cross man is not cross banning the running back is not a hundred percent consistent and not a hundred percent reliable for stopping any route from the running back this year. You know, so you just have to kind of think all that out. And then what that does is as you're starting to play your game, you're saying, okay, what am I getting stopped by? And you know, how's that affecting? Like he's running a lot of backed off clouds here or backed off corners. I think this right here, actually a really underrated version of the double corner because now we put this whole tight end quick flat. I wish he would stop getting bumped with a little tight end quick flat. Does a really good job of actually attacking man coverage, which you might not have known that. So, so anyways, those are just some general tips uh, in terms of that. And I just think like, it just makes a lot more sense to play like this because there's actually like a plan. You actually have like, okay, here's a, a systematic kind of approach. So let's see if we can get this set up here. I actually kind of like this setup. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, he may, see how he manned up the tight end? Then I'm able to do stuff like that. So the play that I just ran would be an example of what I would call a constraint theory play. So what a constraint theory play does is it just, like I said, it just ensures that they are they have to respect certain things. So like the the best way I could explain like a constraint theory play is if they start cross manning specific players, like just putting that putting the other player um, on the corner. That's a bad read. That's a bad read. I should have thrown a pick. So just putting the other player on the corner route or putting the other player or, or like in that example there, you know, if they start to man up the tight end a lot, just put the tight end to the flat and throw something else. So just different, um, 
those are just some like just basic examples here. Let's see what he's. I don't really know what he's actually doing, honestly. I feel like he's doing kind of random stuff here. Let's see if we can hit double corner. I feel like he hasn't literally not defended this yet, and he's not going to defend it again. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, if this was like a real, like one of the things I probably should have done a little better job of my second drive, especially on this drive, is now that I've kind of seen like, okay, these are what he's going. This is this is kind of his standard stuff, right? I need to be, you know, I need to be like kind of locked more locked in on okay i need to do this or that one of the things uh that i wanted to quickly point out here is he's kind of showing man coverage i wish i could snap the freaking ball um he's kind of showing man-to-man -man coverage okay so what i wanted to do there is go to one of my favorite man beaters is just play wide trail i think this is probably the best man beating play in the game this year let's see if he does that again see how he's pressing up like this and getting down underneath so we can do one or two things we're going to try to ensure that we're living in a perfect world so we're going to go to rpo actually a good call because he backed him off last second main reason i wanted to do that is i just wanted to actually see is it man coverage it's first of 15 i can kind of burn a play here now that i kind of see what he's doing um we're going to go to this and see if we can't just um yeah boom I mean, he's just not adjusting the double corner. So in a legitimate, like, in, in a very logical way, if they're not going to stop the play, why would you ever call anything other than that, you know? Here, just going to try to see if I can get a cheap touchdown out of this RPO. I, I don't want to throw another interception and waste another red zone opportunity. It literally should be 21-7, to 7, um, or at least, uh, yeah, probably 21-7, to 7, honestly. But it is what it is. Okay, so defensively, how do you play defense here? Well, a couple things you got to think about, and this is where you have to start thinking. This is another little advanced tip that I would I would suggest to people uh, and myself. Again, everything that I say to you guys, I try to teach myself because it's easy to talk about stuff. A lot of times, it's really hard to do it. So, uh, so what we're talking about here is we've got about two minutes and thirty seconds left in the game. So chances are, on the high end, he's going to have two more possessions. On the low end, he's probably going to have one more possession. So as you're playing defense systematically here, this is where you want to try to basically, in my opinion, you want to try to end the game right here. If you get a stop, the game is basically over as long as you don't play stupid on offense. So I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive. So I might, you know, send more pressure. Now he's going to start going to random stuff, uh, which is his MO. But I'm going to I'm going to start sending a little bit more pressure, trying to see if I can like maybe even maybe even like lurk a little bit more aggressively like try to like jump stuff and stuff i think that is um another underrated thing is like again knowing when and when to when to actually try to get your stop i think a lot of people um they don't actually they don't actually do that here is kind of an aggressive defense i put the hard flat out there it doesn't do absolutely anything he's able to get out i mean that's just stupid to me like i don't I just think that's so stupid. I don't know why he would. I don't know why he's not calling that every play because, like, I don't know what to do. All right, when he does this, he normally runs a corner, so we're gonna go to the defense like this, tight end corner. Oh, crosser. Yeah, he probably had the crosser. He just didn't throw the ball. All right, second and ten situation here. here i'm just gonna run out here myself when they're doing stuff like this i mean it's it's kind of honestly that's a hard flat he threw right at a hard oh i wish they would wish they would catch that all right so fourth and nine so this is my stop or this is at least the best chance i've probably had all game at getting a stop so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna send five to try to gas him up a little bit. And depending on the formation, he's coming out in a bunch typically. So if someone is ever just like randomly kind of audibling uh, to bunch, we know that to be verticals. So we're going to try to try to get a little aggressive here against verticals. Let's see. And he throws a stupid seam streak. I hate that. I hate that that's open. Whatever. So now uh, we're going to go back to kind of some more basic bunch defense. Just because, you know, it's like, eh, there's verticals. There it is. There it is. There's Old Faithful. Somehow we're not able to stop it. Hard flats don't hard flat. Okay, so I'm actually a lot more comfortable defending bunch than I <laughs> than I am against slot offset. So uh, I'm not, I'm actually thrilled that he went to bunch here. We're going to man up the running back. Let's see if this will stop it. Yep, yep, yep. Throw that. Throw that on the left. Yep, good read. 
That's just random stuff, man. Like, they just do random stuff sometimes. So when you're playing somebody that does random stuff, honestly, the best defense is cover four drop. Now that he's going back to this, I just don't know what to do against a formation like this. I literally don't know. I don't know why DB Fire 2 doesn't stop stuff. Like, you would think just this defense right here would basically stop everything. And you just use her the slot. But it just doesn't, man. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. That is why Lurk Artist is such an important ability, man. You have to have Lurk Artist. So right there, I actually am so thankful that he passed. And I just essentially usered the I usered the slot initially. And then I saw the wheel behind it and just went to that. And got my stop. So uh, right here, it's kind of important. You don't want to waste a stop. Like I already wasted one stop this game. So what I mean by ways to stop is to give them the ball back. So three points here is completely fine. The game's basically over if I score three, at least in my opinion. So just kind of playing standard offense. I'm just trying to score. I'm just trying to end the game, essentially. You could, like at this point, go to RPOs. He's going to go ahead and quit out here because I think we're in field goal range. But anyways, those are some tips and strategies that I like to use. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay. Thanks for watching. And if you want any of the eBooks, they're in the Patreon. Link is in the description.